so glad I'm here. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Turning your Bible this morning to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. As the Lord have laid this message this morning on my heart. Isaiah chapter 6. <clears throat> and after we have read the key verses, we shall pray and then we shall sing the hymn of preparation, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, as we are here in His name. Have Thine Own Way. As God speaks to all of us who are worshiping this morning in person and by live streaming. May we stand for the reading of God's word. Properly we come from the King James translation of the scripture. We encourage all of us to read together their Bibles in the pockets of the pew. King James translation. We shall read the key verses. From the sixth chapter of Isaiah, let us read verse three and four. Three and four. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse four. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. From the New Living Translation of the Scripture, verses 4, 3, and 4, we find these words. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Verse 4, their voices shook the temple to its foundation and the entire building was filled with smoke. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray the message this morning, believers recognizing the holiness of God. Believers recognizing the holiness of God. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. They were calling out the New Living Translation to each other. The holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's army. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we thank you on this beautiful Lord's day you have created. We are thankful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We're glad to be in your presence together as baptized believers in Christ and those who are seekers wanting to know more about Christ. We are glad to be in your presence. We are thankful, our Father, for this is the day you have made and we are rejoicing in it. We acknowledge, our Father, in you we live and move and breathe and have our being. Apart from you, we have no life. Apart from you, we are dead. We thank you, Lord for providing all of our needs, not only this morning, but from the rocking of our cradle up to this golden moment in age of life. We thank you, Lord, for however many years we have been on earth, you have been with each one of us down through the years. Through many dangers, toils and snares, trials and tribulations, joys and sorrows, victories and defeats. You have been with us, Lord. You have looked out beyond, you've looked beyond our fault and saw our need. You have been gracious to us, merciful to us, kind to us, long-suffering to us, patient with us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Thou who has always been and always will be God. We thank you for this time of worship on this Lord's day, and for the praises that have gone up and are still going up within our souls. 
and for the prayers that have been lifted up. We are thankful, our Father, for thy people to be able to fellowship one with another and to, to lean upon each other's, our Father, help and, and, and comfort and consolation and encouragement. We are thankful to be able to conversate with one another. We are thankful, our Father, just to be able to look upon each other's face and smile and say good morning. Thank you, Lord. We don't take these blessings for granted. Many are laid aside and wish they could be in the house of the Lord this morning. But you have been gracious to us. We ask that, Father, now at this time of preaching that you will take charge of this mortal vessel of mine, that you will make it a vessel fitted unto, unto thy use, and that you will make the vessels of thy people who are worshiping today in person and my live streaming vessels fitted to your use. Empower us. Fill us afresh with your spirit. Have your way, Lord. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and shape us after thy will. While we are waiting, yielded and still. May your word go forth, rightly divided. Thank you that your word will never change. You said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. We are standing on your word. We are breathing your word. We are, our Father, living on your word. We are depending on your word. And you've never failed us yet. You never will, for you are God. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, even the unspoken petitions for those who are lost and, and need a Savior. We pray that today will be the day of salvation. May they know that tomorrow is not promised. The day in which they hear thou, your voice, they, will, they should not harden their heart, but they shall say yes immediately to your will and yes to surrendering their wills to you and your way. We ask it all in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. For his sake we all pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Him of preparation. Join with the choir. Have thine own way.
the Lord our God. Say amen. Amen. <clears throat> Permit me to prayerfully begin this message this morning by raising an observation and then raising a question. And that observation is we live in a time in the history of America and in the history of the world where there is a consensus among all believers everywhere that people have lost the fear of God. People have lost the fear of God. They've lost the respect for God, the reality that God exists. They have lost a consciousness of God to the point that many people are living their lives without any conscience whatsoever. We're living in a time now where people are blatantly saying there is no God. The Bible is a myth or a fairy tale. There are people who have the audacity to say that the Bible was written by human beings when in fact that's a lie Amen. straight from hell. Amen. God used human beings, but God is the sole author of his holy divine word. Amen. We're living in a time now where because people have lost respect for God, they have lost respect for themselves. They've lost respect for their parents, their mothers and their fathers. They do not fear them. They do not respect them. The elders in their family, they do not listen to them. They do not even want to seek their wisdom and counsel, having lived longer than they have. We're living in times now where uh, children uh, acknowledge that, uh, that uh, God is uh, a myth, and they are being taught that in many circles, not only in uh, their family home, in their homes, but they are being taught that, unfortunately, in the larger community, even in schools, uh, where people have that liberty to do so, uh, by introducing curriculum that denies that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Can I get a witness? We're living in times now where there is disrespect in the public arena. And there's disrespect among those who are both elected and appointed officials. And, there's, and it's, uh, it's, it's happening among those who are their peers uh, because people have lost the fear of God. What has happened to the fear of God in America? The fear that uh, uh, existed to some extent and to a greater extent than today, uh, back in the 19, uh, early 1900s and 1800s, where when you read the writings of theologians and Bible scholars uh, from Bible commentaries and books that have been published that are now unpublished books, you find that that was across the board in their writings an understanding that God exists and that... Uh, that the God that created the heavens and the earth. We're living in a time now where uh, people have lost the fear of, of, uh, and respect for law and order. We're living in lawless times where people are doing anything and everything according to what they believe is right. And to the point that if you cross them, uh, they have the wherewithal uh, to take you out yes, or to destroy you Say that, or to, can I get a witness, Amen. or to hinder or cripple you yes, in sir. some manner or another. We living in, we're living in times now where, uh, just a, a simple example, uh, uh, men do not open the door for a woman to come into a building. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. It's everybody for himself. And God help us all. Can I get a witness? I'm talking about common courtesy. Can I get a witness? 
courteous. We are living in times now where it's hard to find someone saying thank you. Thank you very much. Can I get a witness? We're living in times now where children don't have forgotten how to even reverence or to respect their parents and to recognize that their parents are making sacrifices, that these are sacrifices that they are giving in, 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 in a salute of love to their children. And children are taking for granted even the, 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 the blessings of their parents. Can I get a witness? What has happened to the fear of God? What has happened to the fear of God? Uh, uh, when we see God as holy, uh, our instant and only reaction is to see ourselves as unholy. Between God's holiness and man's unholiness, there's a gulf. And until a man understands the holiness of God, he can never know the depth of his sin. Can I get a witness? That's why people do not even respect the reality that sin exists. But sin is a reality. For when one strays from God, you have, you're moving in the wrong direction. Do I have a witness this morning? When one does not acknowledge that the foundation of all life is in God, then one will do whatever they want to with whom they want to, however they want to, and any time they want to. Can I get a witness? And so there's no respect for, amen, public officials or public safety officials. There's no respect for policemen, no respect for firemen, no respect for those who work in the, in the allied health areas, the doctors and nurses. Can I get a witness? We ought to be shaken to our roots when we see ourselves in comparison to God. If we are not deeply pained about our sin, we do not understand the holiness of God. Do we understand the holiness of God this morning? Do we know that God is holy? Holy, pure, righteous, perfect in all his ways? Without such a vision of God's holiness, true worship is not possible. We go through form and formality. We go through routine. But our worship is in vain. True worship is not possible when we do not understand the holiness of God. Worship is not haphazard. It does not rush into God's presence unprepared and insensitive to the majesty of God. It, worship is not shallow. It's not superficial. It's real for those who understand the holiness of God. Yes. Worship uh, is a life lived in the presence of an infinite, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient God. Worship. And today we have people who have failed to worship God who may show up on Sundays and through the week and who may tune in live streaming to other broadcasts of ministers preaching, choir singing. But it's really entertainment. It's really showmanship. It's, it's really, amen, uh, what can I get out of this to make me laugh or tickle, be tickled? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? God is holy. I want you to say that God is holy. God is holy. Knowing that our God is immutable in his divine nature, omnipotent and omnipresent, uh, is very important. But those attributes, among many, truly give limited insight into what God expects of us. And so the question that must be raised is, what is it beyond his unchanging, all-powerful, infinite knowing presence compels us this morning to worship him? What is it about God? What is it about Elohim in the Hebrew, the creator God, 
that compels us to worship him. Mm -hmm. To worship him, not to show up, but to worship him. The answer is, in our text this morning, he's holy. I want you to say that. His holiness, His holiness. drives me, drives me. To, worship to worship him. His holiness, His holiness. His holiness. The fact is, all of the wonderful attributes of God, of all of them, and there are many, holiness is the one attribute that most uniquely describes, describes him. And in reality, is the summarization of all his other attributes. Everything can be summed up in the holiness and perfection and purity of God. Amen. The word holiness refers to separateness, separateness, yes, and that God's unlike any other being. Amen. He's unlike Buddha, he's un unlike Muhammad, and any other guru. He's God all by himself. Can I get a witness? I want you to say that God is God all by himself. The word holiness indicates God's completeness. There's nothing lacking in God. He's infinite in perfection. Everything we need is in God. If we are sick, he's a doctor. If, if we are restless, he's our peace. Do I have a witness this morning? If our souls are empty, he's our bread and our water. Living water at that. Holiness is the single attribute of God that binds all the other divine attributes together. This is, this, uh, thus when, when, when truly God's holiness is properly understood, it will revolutionize our thinking. It will revolutionize our life. It will revolutionize our attention to what happens in life. It will revolutionize our decision making. It will revolutionize our uh, communicating with one another. It will change out the quality of our life for better and it will change the quality of our worship. Over in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, wonderful book of prophecy. When the angel exalted God, the angels were recorded saying, in heaven, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of God, the Lord God, the Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Do we not know that when we get to heaven, we're going to join in with the angels? Singing, holy, holy. I want you to practice that now. Holy, 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 holy. It's the Lord God Almighty. The whole universe is full of his glory. That's a song that we'll be singing in heaven. Exodus 15 and 11 asked the question, who is like, an, like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, always working wonders? The answer, of course, is that there is no one being equal to God in holiness. And holiness is so exclusively an attitude of our God that Psalms 119 and verse 9 declares these words, holy is an awesome God. Holy and awesome is his name. Holy and awesome is his name. My friends, we need to know today, especially in these times of rebellion, times of anarchy, in times of, uh, of people doing whatever they want to do against the moral, social uh, fabrics of our time, the ethical laws that God have laid down, that God is a God who's so holy that he will not always <laughs> tolerate our foolishness. Many people think they're getting by 
without recognizing the holiness of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But God is a God of vengeance. Yes, Can I get a witness? Yes. Our God does not conform to a holy standard, but in truth, God is the standard for all holiness. Yes, He's the standard of holiness. He is the measure. Not people, but God. Not politicians, but God. Not the president or senators or, or, or governors or, or city officials or even the average lay person. God is a standard. Can I get a witness? He's the standard. He's the standard of holiness. Unlike man, he never, he never does anything wrong. He never makes a mistake. I want you to say that God never makes a mistake. When death comes, remember that. God never makes a mistake. He, he never errors. He, he never makes a misjudgment. And God never apologizes for anything. Can I get a witness this morning? He, he never causes something to happen that is supposed to happen and is right to happen. The truth is there are no degrees to his holiness. He is flawless. I want you to say that flawless. We are, we are, we are, we are full of flaws. Every human being on this planet is full of flaws. After the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they became full of flaws. Can I get a witness? But God is flawless. That's why people should not place their trust and see man as a God. Can I get a witness this morning? Every human being can make mistakes and do make mistakes. He is holy without sin, full of righteousness, and infinitely holy. Therefore, to be in, the God's, to be in God's presence, to be in God's presence, to really be in his presence, not around his presence, but in his presence, one has to be holy. In our text today from Isaiah chapter 6, this is what Isaiah came to know and to understand and to experience. But most importantly, what we also must know and what we also must understand if we are to worship him in spirit and in the truth that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and that there is salvation no other name but Jesus the Christ. In our text today, we find a description of Isaiah's encounter with God's holiness in our text from chapter 6. Let us take note that King Uzziah, whose name is mentioned in verse 1, had been king of Judah some 52 years. And although he was superficially effective and had secured the country of Judah from its enemies, and that he had built a formidable, strong, army and that he had tightened up its defenses and had created economic productivity and it brought great eternal security to the nation. Inwardly, the nation of Judah was corrupt. The nation of Judah was defiled. The nation of Judah was deeply afflicted and they were superficially worshiping God. I wonder if that might be applicable to our times. Superficial, defiled, deeply afflicted, going through a form of godliness and worship, but not with the power. I wonder if that may be the case. I believe if we study the scriptures, God will speak to us and say what was applicable and what was true of Judah has been true throughout the centuries. And it is true today because, again, Jesus, uh, 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 Paul is on record saying to Timothy, Timothy, remember this as you go back to Ephesus to pastor the people there, that perilous times will come. Can I get a witness? Amen. When men will not endure sound doctrine. 
but will go after for themselves teachers having itching ears. They will turn away from the truth and will turn to lies. I want you to say that turn to lies and to fables and to myths and to superstition. As a result, we find in reading chapter five of Isaiah, Isaiah pronounced a half dozen curses on Judah. Sadly, the people in Judah had the perception that things were going well because they had a good leader. But in 740 BC, King Uzziah, their leader, died of leprosy. I want you to say that he died of leprosy. When God struck him down, because of the sin of pride. And I stopped by to tell you that the sin of pride was the first sin, the foundation upon which Adam and Eve sinned, pride. And, and pride is still a prevalent sin in this nation and in the world. It's a sin in our communities. It's a sin in us. We can be so prideful at times. Can I get a witness? that we fail to humble ourselves. Everything, every, James says it, like, says it like this, every good gift, James 1 and 17, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. We have nothing, we brought nothing into the world. Whatever we have has been entrusted to us. Can I get a witness? Whatever we have that is good comes from God. I want you to say that everything I have that is good comes from God. When Uzziah and Urziah died, the nation of Judah's sense of security was gone, and Isaiah felt the tremendous need to enter into the presence of God. In Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, as you look in your Bibles now, Isaiah describes in verses 1 through 4, first of all, that in the temple he saw the Lord. I want you to read with me from the King James translation of the scripture, verses 1 through 4. Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw so the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. From the New Living Translation of the scripture, hear these words, beginning with verse 1. It was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphims, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, the holy, ho holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Verse 4, their voices shook the temple and its, to its foundation in the entire building was filled with smoke. I want us to note that in this first uh, uh, episode that Isaiah encounters God, we assume that Isaiah was in the temple when this marvelous event occurred, but uh, we, we can't be sure because the temple referred to in verse one is the heavenly temple. I want you to say that the heavenly temple <laughs> rather than Solomon's temple. King Uzziah died in 740 BC and was one of Judah's greatest leaders. Even though in his latter, uh, uh, and, and in his latter years, he was disciplined for disobeying God as recorded in 2 Chronicles 26, verse 16 through 21. A great king may have left his throne on earth, but the greatest king was still on his throne in heaven. This was the Lord. For the young Isaiah, the outlook was bleak. His beloved king had died. His nation was in peril and he could do little about it. The outlook may have been bleak, but 
the uplook was glorious. God was still on the throne, reigning as the sovereign God. From heaven's point of view, the whole earth was full of his glory. When your world, brothers and sisters, tumbles in, I want you to know God is still on the throne. There's a song that we used to sing in the church, God is still on the throne. Whenever, wherever you walk, you're not walking alone. Remember, God is still on the throne. Do you know that this morning? He, he, he's reigning right now. While we're worshiping, he's reigning right now. He's still on the throne. Now in verses five through six, we see secondly, not only did God, uh, Isaiah see God, but when you are in the presence of God, you will come to see yourself. We will come to see ourselves as we really are. And as God sees us, you can put on for other people. You can dress up. Can I get a witness? You can put on a mask. Can I get a witness? You can go through hypocrisy and pretending. Can I get a witness? Yes, but in the presence of God, God sees us as we really are. Yes, 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 yes. The sight of a holy God and the sound of a holy hymn of worship brought great conviction to the heart of Isaiah. And he confessed that he was a sinner His un with unclean lips and, 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 and he had an unclean heart. He cried out in the midst of his introspection that God was putting upon him. He cried out inwardly, I I'm an undone man. I dwell in the midst of unclean people. Amen. Can I get a witness? Yes. And God met his need. Yes. Which brings up a point, when you cry out to God and you're real with God, God will meet your need. You can try and try and try and try to solve something or to come through something. Can I get a witness? And your trying is in vain. But when you cry out to God and say, oh God, I am at my wit's end. Help me. God will cry out to you and says, I'm here. I will help you. I will make a way for you. Here's what you've been looking for. This is what you thought you lost. Can I get a witness? He saw himself. When you worship on the Lord's day, do you see yourself? Yes. Or are you always looking at the preacher? Yes. And looking at the choir? Yes. And listening for criticisms? Yes. So when you go home, you said, I didn't like this. Yes. I didn't like that. Yes. She wasn't dressed right. Yes. The preacher preached too long. Yes. And, and, and somebody asked you, well, what did you get out of it? I got nothing out of it. You weren't able to see yourself. Because when we worship God, God will reveal to us how well we are doing. <laughs> Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. And whereas we've been patting ourselves on the back, the Lord said, no, you flunked this morning. <laughs> I wish I had a prayer in church this morning. Before we can minister to others, we must permit God to minister to us. Before we can speak a word of encouragement to others, we must ask God to encourage us. How can you encourage somebody when you are looking like you've lost the world? Before we pronounce the word woe upon anybody else, we really need to say, woe is me. I want you to say that this more, not for this for the repetition, but from introspection, God inspecting us this morning, woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. What we're really saying is, oh, I'm not perfect yet. I haven't arrived yet. Lord, I am pressing on toward the prize, toward the mark of the high calling. Oh Lord, created me a clean heart. Get this, get this out of me that I, I, don't, I, I got something against so and so, Lord, take it away from me. I can't speak to so and so, I don't like so and so, take it out of me. 
I'm better than so and so. Woe is me. Woe is me. That brings us down to humility. Isaiah's conviction led to confession. Confession led to cleansing. John is recorded in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who, let me ask you, did you ask God to forgive you this morning? In your praying, from the time you woke up to the time you arrived here by live streaming or worshiping in person, did we cry and ask God, Lord, create in me a clean heart. I recognize my heart is not clean like it ought be. And I'm not assuming that it is clean. Totally. Forgive me of my sins. How many of us take the time every day before we start along life's way to have an introspection and ask God, search me. Search me, oh God. Try me. See if there's anything in me that should not be and lead me unto the way of everlasting. He saw himself. People get better when they see themselves and they respond appropriately to God. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Isaiah, like Isaiah, many of the great heroes of the faith saw themselves and humbled themselves before God. Abraham saw himself. David saw himself. Joshua saw himself. Can I get a witness? Samuel saw himself. Can I get a witness? Ruth and Naomi saw themselves. Can I get a witness? Jeremiah saw himself. In fact, Jeremiah said, Lord, I'm not qualified to go and, 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 and pro prophesy to the children of Israel. I I'm just a little child. I'm, I'm a little child. And the Lord says, before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I appointed you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Isaiah, like Isaiah, many of the great heroes of the faith themselves repented, humbled themselves. Job himself was one who went through many troubles, trials, tribulations. And when he finally got his audience with God, God began to ask him questions. Job got quiet. He couldn't say a word except, oh God, have mercy. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? This morning, thirdly, the third uh, experience that Isaiah had in his vision, uh, amen, the nation uh, needed uh, the Lord, and the Lord wanted a servant to minister to the people. In our text this morning, we see in verse 8 that Isaiah volunteered to be that servant. He volunteered. I want you to read verses 8 right now. Verse 8 from the King James translation of the scripture and then from the New Living Translation. And I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. The New Living Translation. And I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. There's a lack of volunteers today in our, in our churches. There's a lack of people volunteering with the spiritual gifts God have endowed them with to serve the Lord. Can I get a witness? Isaiah volunteered to be that servant. He did not discuss his call from the Lord. He simply said, here am I. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Never underestimate, brothers and sisters, what God can do with a willing worker, one who's ready to serve. There is an even greater need for laborers today than ever before. We have tremendous opportunity to spread the gospel throughout Cincinnati, throughout Ohio, throughout the world. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? And I'm not talking about just this congregation. I'm talking about congregations everywhere. There's an opportunity to share the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ came into the world to down the cross for the sins of the whole world, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his perfect precious blood as the sacrificial lamb of God. He died and canceled every human being's sin debt. Can I get a witness? Amen. Including our sin debt. That's good news. Amen. He was buried as prophesied on the third day morning. He was raised from the dead with all power and all authority. And he says, I, he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys to death and Hades in my hand. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that believeth in me shall never die. Yes, I am that I am. Yes, that's the good news. That's the news that's needed everywhere. Yes, in fact, let's start with the home. There are children today. Yes, there are teenagers today. Yes, there are aunts and cousins and, and nieces and nephews yes, who need Jesus. Amen. How many of us know that? Hold your hand up and say, I know. I know. Need Jesus. They need Jesus. They don't need any more money. They need Jesus. They don't need a car, an automobile. Above Jesus. What good is having an automobile without Jesus? You don't know how to drive it right. And you don't have an appreciation for people. We need Jesus Christ. The solid rock. Can I get a witness? There's a need today for the gospel. There's even a greater need for laborers, a man, a man wherever we go, who have a tremendous opportunities to share the gospel in places we never thought of. There's a need to share the gospel. Question is, are you one of God's willing workers? Are you one of God's willing workers? I didn't say complaining workers. I want you to say that complaining workers. Say it again, complaining workers. Because, amen, I have experience in my pastor through the years, people can complain. They can complain while they're doing God's work. They can complain, 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 and it just drives people away. Can I get a witness? Amen. And I stopped by to tell you, if you're a complaining worker, you need to sit down and you need to come to the mourner's bench. You need to ask God to take the complaining and the, and, amen, and the criticizing out of your heart. That you may have a joyful spirit, a joyful heart, a joyful desire to love God and to serve humanity. Talk the voice of Jesus calling. Him this rope, who will go and work today? Feels a white harvest is waiting. Who will bear the sheaves away? Earnestly the master calleth. Earnestly. Rich rewards he offers free. Who will answer gladly saying, Hear am I, O Lord, send me. Let none hear you idly saying, there's nothing I can do. While the souls of men are dying and the master's calls for you, take your task. Take the task he gives you gladly. Not sadly. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth, saying, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Is that your testimony? Don't, tell, don't lie this morning. Is that your testimony? Hold your hand up and say, Yes, Lord, that's my testimony. Here am I. Here am I. Amen. And then fourthly, we find the stage that Isaac comes to in the blindness, the blindness of the nation blindness of the nation in, in verses 9 through 13. Let's read that together from the, new, from the King James translation of the scripture. Verses 9 through 13. Let's read prayerfully and let's, as we read, ask God to give us illumination on what God is saying to us individually and collectively. Let's read. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and ye see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and co convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men away 
and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Stop there. From the New Living Translation, properly. Listen again, verses 9 through 12. And he said, yes, go and say to this people, listen carefully, but do not understand. Watch closely, but learn nothing. Harden the hearts of these people. Plug their ears and shut their eyes. That way they will not see with their eyes, nor hear with their ears, nor understand with their hearts, and turn to me for healing. Then I said, Lord, how long will this go on? And he replied, until their towns are empty, their houses are deserted, and the whole country is a wasteland, until the Lord has sent everyone away, and the entire land of Israel lies deserted. The Lord did not give his servant much encouragement here. When you read the Bible, and it talks about end times, for some, we welcome the coming of the Lord and the reality that the new earth and the new heavens are coming. And in the new earth will dwell the righteous, those who have a right relationship with God. And there will be no more conflicts, no more wars, no more killings, no more murders, no more diseases. No more hospitalizations. No more medicine. Can I get a witness? No more growing old in age and losing one's comprehension and mind. Can I get a witness? We look forward to that land where there are no cloudy days. But for those who walk in darkness, this message is not a message of encouragement. And, and reading the Bible is not a message of encouragement because the Lord says the wrath of God is coming. Vengeance that I will take upon myself is mine. I will do the judging because I'm qualified. Can I get a witness this morning? And for those who hear that, they want to dismiss that. They want to live their life as if everything is joyful and, and, and jubilant and everything is just, just great. And, 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 and uh, they don't even want to think about death. And yet it happens every moment. Even now as I'm preaching, somebody is dying. Isaiah's ministry will actually make some people's eyes more blind, their ears more deaf and their hearts more callous. Can I get a witness? In verse 9 and 10, it's very important that we understand that they are quoted six times, verse 9 and 10, in the New Testament. These verses are quoted some six times. Matthew chapter 13, verse 13 through 15. In Mark chapter 4, verse 12. In Luke chapter 8, verse 10. In John chapter 12, verse 40. In Acts chapter 28, verse 25 through 28, and in Romans chapter 11, verse 8, God does not deliberately make sinners blind, deaf, and hard-hearted. But the more people resist God's truth, the more deaf they become, who reject him, the less able they are able to receive truth and not recognize truth from lies. Can I get a witness? Because the Bible says Satan has blinded, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, Satan has blinded the minds of, the, of, the, of those who are unbelievers. He has the, he's blinded them. And they can't see. They can't hear. They can't comprehend. God doesn't do this. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that follows after me shall not walk in darkness. Can I get a witness? But shall have the light of life. But the servants, amen, those who are his children, not only the preacher, but the lay people, those who sit in the pew, are to proclaim the word of God no matter how people respond. For the test of ministry is not outward success, but faithfulness to the Lord. I'm, I'm getting ready to close. God told Isaiah that his ministry would end in seemingly, in seeming failure. 
with the land ruined and people taken off into exile. But a rampant and a remnant would survive. I want to say that a remnant would survive. It would, it would be like a stump of a fallen tree from which the shoots, the holy seed would come and they would continue the true faith in the land. Isaiah needed a long range perspective on his ministry or else he would have felt like he was accomplishing nothing. And so God says, go tell, go tell. It's still God's command today, go tell. Go tell the good news. Though men have sinned, they have, he has mercy and pardon. And we, as, I, as I prepare to close, it's important <clears throat> not only that Isaiah had a worship experience, but it's important that we have continually a worship experience. And, and brothers and sisters, that worship experience is not confined to 405 West 7th Street. Amen. That worship experience is not just confined to your address at home. Yes. Wherever we are, whether on land or on sea or in the air, Amen. wherever we are, we are able, we are, have the capacity to worship, worship God because God indwells the body of every baptized believer in Christ. And if that's your testimony, applaud the Lord this morning. The devil has been represent, misrepresenting God from the very beginning of history. The devil is a liar. He's a slanderer. He has so misrepresented the nature of God and the character of God that some people hate God instead of loving God. Can I get a witness? They refuse to believe in him when in reality he's worthy of their complete trust. Can I get a witness? That's why I love the hymns of the church. And that's why I, I don't mind singing whenever that hymn is raised. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. Is that your testimony? In the Lord, I will trust in the Lord till I die. Can I get a witness? I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. Can I get a witness? Can't you hear the choir and the church singing, amen, in years past? I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. I'm going to work while it's day. I'm going to work uh, while it's day. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, praise his holy name. Um, God is worthy uh, of all of our trust. And God is no cruel tyrant. Uh, and God is not brutal. Uh, he, we, we, we need to quit listening uh, to what the devil says about God. Uh, can I get a witness? Um, Jesus uh, came to reveal God uh, and to demonstrate uh, that God uh, is love. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, he's full of mercy. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, he has now dealt with us uh, according to our sins, uh, nor rewarded us uh, according to our iniquities. Uh, aren't you glad about it? Uh, I said, aren't you glad about it? Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, he's looked beyond our fault uh, and saw our need. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I stop by to tell you, uh, there's not a friend uh, like the lowly Jesus. Uh, no, not one. Uh, no, not one. Uh, there's not an hour uh, that he is not near us. Uh, no, not one. Uh, no, not one. Uh, Jesus knows uh, all about our struggles, uh, and he will guide us uh, until the day is done. Uh, there's uh, not a friend uh, like the lowly Jesus. Uh, no, not one. Uh, no, not one. Uh, do you know him this morning? Uh, do you love him this morning? Uh, every day, uh, we need the Lord. Uh, I said every day, uh, we need the Lord. Uh, every hour, uh, we need the Lord. Uh, every moment, uh, we need the Lord. Uh, we need him to walk with us. Uh, we need him to guide us. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, we need him to empower us. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and one thing, uh, I got the Lord. Uh, say that weight uh, 
came upon the Lord uh, shall uh, renew their strength. Uh, shall. Uh, no maybe about it. Uh, has he renewed your strength? Uh, has he renewed your strength? Uh, are you living uh, in the strength of the Lord? Uh, are you living uh, right now uh, in the strength of the Lord? Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, he, we will mount up uh, with wings as an eagle. Uh, we will walk uh, and not be weary. Uh, we will walk and not be weary. Yes. 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 Uh, every day and every hour. Uh, I'm crying out uh, just a closer. Uh, walk with me. Uh, Granted, Jesus, uh, if you please, uh, daily walking uh, close to me, uh, let it be. Uh, can you say that? Let it be. Uh, let it be. Uh, let it be. Uh, God uh, will answer prayer. Uh, he may not come uh, when you want him to, uh, but he's always, 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 always. Always on time. He died on the cross. He was on time. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He was on time. But glory, 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 hallelujah, on time. Early, early Sunday morning, God the Father. Will raise his son from the dead. But all power, all power, all power, all power. God stood on resurrection ground. The Lord says, I'm he that liveth and was dead. The whole I'm alive forevermore. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? I stop by the tell you. It's time to worship the Lord. It's time to worship the Lord. It's time to worship the Lord. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. And when we worship Him, we will always have the right response. We will always have his right response. We will find ourselves like Isaiah saying, Here am I. I'll go. I'll speak. I'll intercede and pray. I will visit. I will bear one another's burdens. I will fulfill the law of Christ. I will be tenderhearted, forgiving one another. I will do everything you want me to do because I recognize you're holy. 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 Just a closer walk with thee. Come, choir. Day, if you please. Oh, day, be walking close to thee. Help me to sing it, church. Let it be, dear Lord. Let sing that first verse again. This is our prayer this morning. Just a closer walk with me. Hear us, Lord. Hear us. Hey! 
testimony of the book of Isaiah. Yes. We thank you, Lord, yes. that Isaiah recognized the holiness of God. Yes. He came to himself and he came to recognize that in order to dwell in the presence of God, he needed to ask and to call out and to cry out for purging, for deliverance from sin. Lord, this morning, Many in the body of Christ need to cry out and call out and ask for and plead for purging of sins. Some sins have been strongholds in their lives. Some sins they have been committed, committing year after year after year, day after day. Our Father, help us to remember that you are able not only to forgive sin, but you're able to, our Father, take sin away. You're able, our Father, to cause every believer to die daily to their sins in order to be able to worship you and worshiping you to hear your voice and to hear your calling upon their lives. Many today are blind and cannot see their pitfalls and their shortfalls. I pray, our Father, for the Church of Jesus Christ that is so quiet in these times of anarchy and lawlessness and sinfulness and immorality and idolatry who are so quiet about their own faith. Help us to remember you have called us to be ambassadors. You've called us, our Father, to be announcers and proclaimers. You've called us, our Father, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to a broken world, to a sinful world. You've called us, no matter our Father, what our positions in life may be, career otherwise, you call us above all to be your servants, your ambassadors, and to share our faith and to share it with boldness and with humility. Our Father, we pray for the Church of Jesus Christ. We pray for preachers everywhere. We pray, our Father, for elders everywhere. We pray for deacons and students everywhere, Lord. We're praying for deaconesses everywhere. We're praying for the mothers of the church. We're praying for the fathers of the church. Oh, have mercy this morning. In these times, 
Our Father, where men have lost their way. We pray, our Father, that we will hear what Isaiah heard when you said, To whom shall I sin and who will go for us? May we every day resolve and be determined and ask you for the help to say, Here am I. Send me. I'll go. I'll speak no matter what the cost. I'll proclaim no matter what persecutions may come. I will give no matter what my situation may be. I will give of my best. Oh God, have mercy. Help us to know you're calling us as you call Isaiah. You are saying to us, I'm looking at you. I see that your heart is right, but your motives are not right. Yes. Your actions are not right. You say you'll go, but then you won't. You say you'll speak, but then you won't. You say you'll sacrifice, but I see that you won't. Help us to see ourselves, Lord. Help us to remember it's not about what we want. It's about what you want. It's about all. It's about you. It's all about you. Oh God, we pray for believers and we pray for sinners. We pray that they will come to recognize that they have no Savior until they come to you. That the sins of their life are upon themselves. And unless they repent of our sins and claim you as their Savior, they will die and live apart from you in that eternal place of torment called hell. We pray, our Father, that they will search the Scriptures. They will hear the Word of God. They will come to recognize that the Word of God is truth and is not lies. Our Father, may they be convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Master, as they are convicted, may they move under that conviction to repenting, confessing you as a Savior, repenting of their sins, and claiming the wonderful promise of forgiveness. And then, Master, may they move from there and connect with the church, a Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led church, where they can continue to grow as newborn babies in Christ, in wisdom and in knowledge, and in fellowship with brothers and sisters of like mind, and that they might find themselves a father hearing your voice saying it's time to venture out and to serve. Our Father, may believers know and may unbelievers know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. May believers know that and may unbelievers who come to you know that even in their youth as Christians, you will not put any more than they're able to bear. Bless them now that they may come and make that decision. And then Master, throughout our journey, may this song and this hymn be ever in our hearts and our minds just to close the walk. Granted, Jesus, if you please, daily walking close to thee, let it be, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. May it be on the lips and in the hearts of not only adults, but young adults, couples and singles. May it be on the hearts of teenagers. May they never be ashamed to own you even among their peers in schools. And may it be among the hearts of parents, mothers and fathers. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. And for his sake we pray. And the church continue to sing just a closer walk with me. Grant. people said amen. Amen. amen may we bow for a moment of meditation let the church sing let the church sing
his people to live holy lives in his presence don't let anyone separate you from the love and the holiness, holiness. of God yes. praise him bless you union and to all who are worshiping in person this morning the decisions you've made be sure to complete those decision communication cards and drop them in the offering plate as you leave the staff will follow up for those who have made decisions for Christ